So in this video, I'm going to be going over how you can improve your ping on Roblox. Now to start off, I wanted to explain ping to you guys since it is commonly associated with lag, but there is also a difference between lag and getting uh, FPS drops or just low FPS in the middle of your game. For ping, you would notice that your connection to the game stutters, your FPS is working fine, but people may be jumping around or things are stuttering in the game and uh, it's basically just when your computer is connecting to the Roblox servers and then the Roblox servers are connecting back to you and there is a delay in that connection. So to start off, we need to make sure it's not gonna be your internet's issue. So we're gonna run a speed test. It could be your internet's issue if you either have too low speed of connection for the game you're trying to run which I say if you have more than 10 up and 10 down, you can probably run Roblox just fine. Or if you have somebody on your network uh, also using up bandwidth, like watching movies or something, they may be using up all your bandwidth that you could be using for Roblox. But in, let's just run a speed test to see if I could be running Roblox right now. So I would need about 10 up and 10 down. You can go to speedtest.net to run a speed test or you can run a speed test on one of the many other platforms. So you can see in my result right here that I got more than 10 up and 10 down, so I'm absolutely fine. Um, it's We're talking in megabits per second. Uh, make sure you don't confuse anything like this. Um, for my ping, this isn't gonna be accurate for Roblox servers. This is whatever server is near me. Sometimes when you're connecting to a Roblox game, you can connect one in a server that's really far from you and you might have to find a new one if that's the case. Most of the time, if you click the play button, it'll try to find a server close to you. Um, but it won't always put you in a server, so you may have to browse the server list trying to find one. The Roblox ping, so since ping is based on, a lot of it is based on distance to the server, you'll definitely need to, uh, like, the speed test ping is not representative of your Roblox ping, like, at all. Plus, there's uh, bigger packets you need to be downloading from Roblox than what you're doing from speed test, so this is not exactly representative. Though, if your speed test ping is high, there's a likelihood that something else is going wrong that could also be causing your Roblox ping to be uh, very high. So next, we're going to focus on ways that we could resolve these high ping issues. So the first few are the simplest ways we will start off. So if you are using Wi-Fi, you're on a very unstable connection. Imagine you have to share your Wi-Fi connection with all the other Wi-Fi devices in your house. I remember my dad saying we had around 200 devices using Wi-Fi on our mesh network, but that that's quite a bit. And you're all sharing essentially the same connection if you're not on a mesh network and you just have one router. That's not good. There's a lot of interference and you could be far away from your router, in which case you would uh, have high ping just because there's so much interference between you and your router. Maybe there's some walls in between and there could be connection interruptions just because like if you've ever been on your like phone on school Wi-Fi and just doesn't connect or you're slow because there's so much other competition to try and get that signal from the router. And maybe you don't even have priority on that router so someone else could be in your network. Your brother or sister could be watching some Netflix on their phone and using up all of the bandwidth. So Wi-Fi isn't exactly the best way to go and you should be using an ethernet cable. I re recommend Cat5e, Cat6, or Cat7. Cat5e is probably the cheapest, but Cat6 is really similar to that in price and it's just a better uh, category cable in general, but they do have the same speeds. It's a bit complicated to explain, but I would recommend the Cat6 cable. If you don't have uh, your uh, network LAN cables throughout your house or you don't have a wall jack in your room you can either run a cable or I've done this before where I ran a hundred foot cable to my router that was in my living room but I could only do that but it started tripping people so I couldn't do that anymore and I had to run a cable through my attic that took a bit of work but it is a possibility but there are a few other ways to do it if you don't have a uh, networking port in your room so you could use a mocha adapter uh, or you could use a power line adapter. So in the case of a mocha adapter, you'll be going over your coax network and it's not exactly the speediest, but it is speedier 
than what using a power line adapter would gain you. They're a tad bit complicated to set up, so if you are young, you may want to ask your parents for help with this, and they might be a bit out of your price range, but they aren't expect expensive at all. You're probably looking at around uh, $50 to $100 to buy one of these things, but uh, for an ethernet cable to be able to run ethernet, that is very good. The next is a power line adapter. So a power line adapter will use your electrical network. In my case, I actually use one of these in my house because to get uh, a good internet to my garage, since it's so far away, we use the electrical network to run a signal over the electrical electrical network in our house to get to the garage. And it always nets us pretty good signals in our garage. I think we get about 50 up and 50 down on what we have in our garage from our original gigabit internet. In the case that you can't do any of these because they may be out of your price range uh, or you just can't do them in your house, you could use a Wi-Fi extender or dongle that is better than what you currently have. See, or you could set up like a mesh network in your house, but uh, a lot of times if you're running on a desktop, they make uh, PCIe networking cards, which are usually very good or you could use a better USB one than what's like in your laptop currently or uh, yeah or you can find a repeater online Wi-Fi repeaters don't usually run you up too much uh, and they can help extend your network to your room so if your Wi-Fi network just doesn't make it very far you can have a repeater which will improve the con connection signal signal strength in your room now if you can't do that because it's still out of your price range you can move the router closer or you can move closer to the router um, because this the closer you are the better your signal strength will be the next thing would be to stop extraneous applications from running on your computer maybe you're downloading a game on steam like i have steam right here uh, we can just go down to our network and tab and you can see i have this it's using up three megabits per second on my network this isn't actually, this is within my network, but yeah. Uh, see, since we're not, if you're downloading a game on Steam, you're gonna be using up all the bandwidth, so it's not gonna leave any room for Roblox to allocate some space on the network. So we're gonna need to either pause our Steam download or any other downloads you have going, or maybe we can wait to play Roblox until we're done with all of those. Or maybe you have some applications just on your PC that you don't need anymore. Maybe you have uh, some cloud storage that your PC is syncing to that you don't necessarily want syncing to, like OneDrive, really annoying. So you could be disabling that. Next, we'll be to run Windows Defender, which you can search up Defender and it'll come up with Windows Security, which is essentially Windows Defender. Go to your virus and threat protection and we can run a full scan to make sure there's not any like adware or anything on your PC that is like accessing the network and taking up our precious bandwidth. And then we go to full scan and then click on scan now. This will take quite a while. So you may wanna run a quick scan if you don't have the time, but you can run a full scan overnight. And especially if, so if you have a lot of storage or uh, if you don't have an SSD, this is gonna take quite a while. Like you see, this is gonna take 35 hours, but you can leave it running in the background if you do wish. The next step would be to update your drivers on your Wi-Fi card or ethernet controller. Uh, you can do this by typing in devices and then going to device manager and then going to your network adapters panel. See, we can automatically search for updates and it'll search on the latest one that Windows has or Microsoft has, or you can browse your computer and you can search them up online. I'm just gonna search automatically and I already have the newest ones already installed. This is for my Wi-Fi. I have a USB Wi-Fi card attached to my PC and this is my uh, ethernet controller and I can just update the drivers for both of them. The last and final step is if there's an issue with your router or modem, you can restart them. I've known I've had quite a few issues with routers in the past. You can restart or reset them. Uh, you probably will not ask your parents before you go ahead and do uh, these kinds of steps because they will take down your network for a bit. It's not immediate or it may mess with some of the settings you have on them. So you may not want to do it and you may want to ask your parents if they have better knowledge.
If this video helped you in any way, please consider subscribing. I do a lot of other Roblox content on my channel and I would really appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm out. Pasadios, my dudes.